During regeneration, there were the genetic equivalents of bit errors in the DNA of the regenerating cells. The Time Lord would change in appearance, height, mass or apparent age. The personality would also change. Even the cells and chemistry of the brain regenerated. Although their blood type would remain the same in all their lives. Pros. The eight doctors, allergies and dominant limbs could also change between regenerations. Audio. The Lady in the Lake. According to the sixth doctor, a Time Lord's basic personality traits remained unchanged throughout all their lives but the balance of said traits could be affected by regeneration. Audio. The sirens of time. With each incarnation, the doctor's memory worked differently. Pros. Nothing o'clock. With some of their memories from before regeneration being lost even after the new incarnation had mentally stabilized, unless they were specifically reminded of relevant events. TV. Castro Valva. Doctor Who. Deep breath. When he fell unconscious after being exposed to radiation, the sixth doctor heard the voice of his successor before the regeneration began in full, leaving him assured that he would regenerate despite the circumstances of his death, the voices of the two doctors briefly merging in his mind as they each noted that their life was far from over. Audio. The brink of death. When the eighth doctor was stabbed by Charlie while he was possessed by anti-time, he nearly died permanently due to his current grief, but found himself conversing with the personas of his immediate three predecessors who helped him realize what had happened and the need to return to life to stop Razalon controlling the power of anti-time. Audio. Zagreus. When the amnesiac eighth doctor was in a coma after his chest was crushed by sandbags, during his coma fantasy he experienced a feeling that he compared to the idea of his body as a coat that he could take off and don another body around a corner but in this instance the doctor did not need to regenerate as his current link to Sabbath would sustain his life even after such serious injuries. Pros. Camera Obscura. On rare instances, regeneration could change a Time Lord's clothing, as happened when the first doctor became the second doctor, TV, the tenth planet, the power of the Daleks, and when the thirteenth doctor became the fourteenth doctor, the latter acknowledging his resemblance to the tenth doctor. TV. The power of the doctor. Most other cases would have the regenerated Time Lord in the attire of their predecessor. TV. Spearhead from space, Robot Al. While most regenerations caused Time Lords to take on an entirely new appearance, it seemed that in very rare circumstances they could regenerate into previous incarnations. The 13th Doctor's regeneration caused the 14th Doctor to look identical to their 10th incarnation, even down to the teeth, something that shocked the newly regenerated Doctor. In addition, this regeneration changed the doctor's clothing. TV. The power of the doctor. The curator had previously noted to the 11th doctor that they may find themselves revisiting a few old faces in years to come with the curator himself having the appearance of an elderly fourth doctor. TV. The day of the doctor. Generally, most newly regenerated time lords appeared physically younger than their preceding incarnations. TV. Doctor Who. Utopia. Death of the doctor so much so that the first doctor assumed it to be the natural result of regeneration. TV. Twice upon a time. Indeed, the tenth doctor once told Rose Tyler that regeneration was an alternative to aging. TV. School reunion. However, this was not always the case. The, dashing young, eleventh doctor was dismayed to find that he would become the, old, twelfth doctor, with his companion Clara Oswald remarking that the new doctor did not look, renewed. TV. Deep breath. Following her second regeneration, River Song, formerly Mel Zucker, observed herself to have a mature appearance. TV. Let's kill Hitler. Ohila offered the Eighth Doctor the choice of whether his successor would be young or old. TV. The Night of the Doctor. Before that, the Second Doctor rejected two potential faces offered to him by the Time Lords. One, too old. And another, too young. TV. The War Games. According to the Valeyard, there was also a risk of emerging from a regeneration as a time tot rather than an adult time lord. Audio. Trial of the Valeyard. River Song's second incarnation started off as a baby. TV. Day of the Moon. Let's kill Hitler. While Razalon actually had the opposite happen to him, changing from the body of a middle-aged man to that of an elderly man. TV. Hellbent. The Master's 16th incarnation resembled a small male child at the start of the Time War and this body regenerated into a more elderly man. Comic. The then and the now, fast asleep. Despite the apparent changes in physical age, observers such as River Song, Clara Oswald and Cindy Wu found that they could identify younger incarnations of the Doctor by looking into their eyes. TV. Silence in the library. The day of the Doctor. 
Comic. The Lost Dimension. One source stated that Time Lords were born with just one heart and grew a second heart on regeneration. This included the Doctor, who in their first incarnation had only one heart. Pros. The Man in the Velvet Mask. Other accounts showed Time Lords having two hearts in their original incarnation, such as the Doctor, Audio, Frostfire, The Abandoned, and Jenny. TV. The Doctor's Daughter. Tegan Jovanka was under the belief that the second heart of a Time Lord was only developed upon the first regeneration, much to the surprise of Leela, who believed that a Time Lord always had two hearts, with neither being sure who was correct. Audio. Time in office. Regeneration also changed the location of said hearts. TV. Dalek. The power of three. Resolution. According to the 11th Doctor, every regeneration was painful. TV. Death of the Doctor with the seventh doctor once describing regeneration as a good and bad feeling in the same way driving a car very fast was a good and bad feeling, enjoying the exhilaration of the process but knowing you were going to die, at the end. Pros. The room with no doors. Clist assured Louis following his first regeneration that the first was always more painful than subsequent ones. Audio. Unregenerate. Regeneration could also change a time lord's biological sex. The Doctor, the Master, the Monk, Rindle, and Lake each had female incarnations, while the majority of their incarnations were male. TV. Twice Upon a Time, Dark Water. Audio. The Wrong Woman, The Lady in the Lake. The General was usually a woman, but one of their incarnations was a bald white male. TV. Hellbent. Other Time Lords changed sex more evenly. A male incarnation of Volstrom regenerated to female form, then back to male, and then female again. Audio. The Side of the Angels, Missy, TV, The Witch is Familiar, and The Thirteenth Doctor, TV, Spyfall, referred to their regenerations to female form as an upgrade, a term also used by Riversong when discussing the former's change. Audio. The Bechdel Test, skin color could also change between regenerations. TV. Let's Kill Hitler, Hellbent, Prose, Engines of War, Audio, The Next Life, The Lady in the Lake. A change in gender, size and skin color appeared to be fairly common, the twelfth doctor stating that he was, one of those stuck in a rut time lords who always the same model of body. Pros. Twice upon a time, in at least one parallel universe outside of end space, the changing of biological sex in a regeneration could only be achieved by committing suicide, with the time lords of this reality taking a much dimmer view, considering such a thing to be a criminal offense. Audio. Exile. More extreme physical changes were also possible. Cavus regenerated a complete body after being decapitated, although the process was cut short when she was stabbed through both hearts, the one that she already possessed and the one that she was growing as she regenerated, and her lover Gander became a kind of human Silurian hybrid in appearance when he regenerated in the realm of Avalon mere hours after his previous change. Pros. The Shadows of Avalon, when the Eleventh Doctor lost his leg during the Siege of Trenzalore, he grew a new one after his body was reset, as his new regeneration cycle began. The Twelfth Doctor had both legs once he had regenerated. TV. The Time of the Doctor. Deep Breath. In the early days of regeneration, it was possible for fragments of other DNA to be incorporated into the new incarnation if, for example, a Time Lord had recently eaten or spent a great deal of time around other species. The early Gallifreyan priest I. M. Foreman suffered from this problem throughout his regenerations each incarnation becoming more and more inhuman as more foreign DNA was incorporated into the process. Pros. Interference. Book 1. Interference. Book 2. As well as the obvious benefits of purging Time Lords of any poisons or diseases that might have caused the deaths, regeneration could have more subtle benefits. As each Time Lord accumulated Artron energy throughout their lives, Regeneration reset the Artron energy levels in their bodies to a preset level to prevent it rising to a point where the radiation could threaten them. Pros. Empire of Death. When the Sirens of Time attempted to make the Doctor their agent, while responding to the Sirens' call more than once would have brought the Doctor permanently under their control, the Doctor was still a free agent as he had responded to their call three times in three different incarnations, suggesting that regeneration would purge the Sirens' influence. Audio. The Sirens of Time. However, this purge would not include assets, as the Seventh Doctor retained an immunity to the Swarm Virus despite receiving that immunity in his fourth incarnation. Audio. Revenge of the Swarm. Some negative influences could not be purged by regeneration, while the Fourth Doctor was able to resist succumbing to the Breath of Forever, 
audio, destroy the infinite, he was still susceptible to the influence of the eminence in his sixth incarnation. Audio, the seeds of war.